Okay gang, so let's go after another problem. All right, so a little bit different here. For this problem, I'm gonna give you guys, you know, the react, like the reactant and the product, and we need to fill in the steps uh, so we can get from point A to point B. So yeah, you might be thinking, oh, we don't need to know SN2, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, not really, we still need to know how this thing is going to proceed, right? Okay, so let's kind of see what we have going on. So we see secondary carbon, secondary carbon. And you can, I hope you're thinking, oh, you know what, it looks like we're just switching out a group here. It looks like SN2. So let's kind of just dissect this a little bit more and see if that actually makes sense. Secondary carbon, so yeah, substrate-wise, SN2 can occur here. Uh, right, we don't have the solvent or anything like that. We're going to provide that. And uh, I hope you guys are thinking, well, it's a little problematic that this OH, not a great leaving group, right? We can overcome that though, so that's not the be all end all. So it is SN2, secondary is going to work for us. We can improve this leaving group. That's going to be one of the obstacles we're going to have to, you know, provide with our reagent steps or reagent sequence. However, and I hope you're thinking about this, along the lines of SN2, we know SN2 backside attack involves stereochemical inversion, right? It inverts your stereo center, your configuration at that center. And you see here, if we're starting off with this wedged OH, we actually have a wedged CN at the end. So we might be scratching our heads thinking, is this really SN2? And it is, in disguise. It's actually a double SN2. Because a first SN2 attack will invert this stereo center to be a wedge, or sorry, a dash. Whatever will come in an attack will be attached as a dash. So we're gonna have to do that SN2 to then set up the second SN2 with this nucleophile, because if we have a dash leaving group, this thing will attack and attach as a wedge. Okay, a lot of talking. Maybe we go through the steps and I'll, I'll rehash it at the end. Okay, so our first step is this OH, bad leaving group, that is not going to work for us. So we need to first improve this OH to be a good leaving group. The way we're going to do that is we're going to have a first step of, and we haven't talked about this together yet, so this, would be, this is a nice way to introduce it. This, uh, this compound called tosyl chloride. And all tosyl chloride is, it looks like this. I'm, I'll have this written down because I do not know the structure off the top of my head. And you guys don't need to, most teachers will not, oh, um, my bad. Most teachers do not make you memorize this. They are okay with you abbreviating this whole piece right here. This is the TS. Tossil, looking like T-O-S-Y-L, tossil chloride, right? So all this is, is the OH does an attack on the tossil part of this, and you eject your CL as a leaving group. So all that happens in this very first step, I'm gonna erase this to make some room, is you almost have a little attack going on, and the only reason why we do that is to set up this. Now we have O, T, S, this, as opposed to O, H, this is a good leaving group. Because as you may have seen when I had the structure down there, there was the ability for so much resonance. So whenever we break this bond right here, the, when the O minus, when this oxygen bears a negative charge, there's so much resonance that, is, that, that you can draw there. This is a, a great stable leaving group. So if you're ever in a situation and you have OH and you need to improve it to a, a leaving group, if you throw in some tosyl chloride, you'll uh, effectively have an oxygen attached to that tosyl piece. And this is a good leaving group. This is something we can do SN2 on. And I'm sorry, this is a wedge. I apologize. I'm sorry. All right. Okie dokie. What we got going on next? That's our first step. So here, now we can do SN2 on this molecule. I'll put a little one over here. This is something we can work with. So we need to do an SN2 reaction on this. And this, isn't, this is not going to be like a permanent thing we'll see in the product. This is just something that's going to help us get to where we need to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in sodium iodide. And really, for us, all we care about is that this is going to give us I minus. I'm just putting that in quotes just to say the sodium iodide is effectively giving us I minus. Because what the I minus does, it's a good nucleophile. 
we attack right here, boot our good now good leaving group, and that gives us this. So the iodide ion, the iodide ion has to come from the back side, right? So it attaches as a dash. Perfect. So I hope what you're seeing is now we have a good leaving group. We have the stereochemical configuration we want, right? The next nucleophile that would come along and attack this stereo center will attach as a wedge. Well, if we just throw in some sodium cyanide, or doesn't matter what this ion is, doesn't matter if you just even put CN minus, right? I like to, sometimes you put the counter ions in, a little extra flare, a little flash. This will be our second attack, and now the cyanide will attach the way we intend it to right here. The back side of this dash is a wedge. And you know what? This works, this is great, but if we want to be extra thorough, right? Since we know this is an SN2 attack and this is an SN2 attack, pick your favorite polaroid protic solvent, right? Maybe we use a little DMSO up here, and you could also use it down here. If you want to use a little DMF, go for it. A little acetone, no problem. Okay, so this, pro this problem here, it was seeing that, okay, there was a substitution, that much is clear. Stereochemistry is a factor, right? There's no racemic mixture, there, there's no elimination, right? So, going through that, we see, okay, nothing was inverted. We retained our stereochemical uh, configuration from the beginning. So it's not just one attack, it's two attacks. So we had to improve this leaving group first because it, it was not the best, it sucked. Right, we used tosyl chloride for that. Then we could then introduce some other nucleophile to give us our first attack to invert our stereochemistry initially. Sodium iodide did the trick. That only was there to then allow us to pr provide the nucleophile that ended up on the molecule in the right configuration. Okay, so watch out for this double SN2. It will come up every once in a while. All right, everybody. So we tackled this SN2 problem without a hitch. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, gang, let's keep you know rolling on. All right, so if we look at this, again, I'm gonna hit you guys with another, gonna give you the reactant, the product, and we need to provide the magic in the middle to make this happen. Okay, so we have methanol here, nothing special. Now let's look at our product. Let's look at the carbon where all the chemistry happens, right? We see that the methanol ends up here, right? No double bonds are present, right? So we can just totally knock off elimination. There's no E1, there's no E2. And if you think about it, there's no racemic mixture given to us here, right? So without even really thinking about it, we can slash SN1 from the realm of possibilities and we can automatically say, hey, this is another SN2 reaction. And if you want to think about it, Right, we're given methanol, we see it attached. There's a stereo center here, right? Stereo chemistry is involved. That's another way to kind of look into realizing, hey, this is an SN2 reaction. All right, okay, so we know this CH3OH, this is a protic compound, right? We've seen this, you know, participate in SN1 reactions because it allows solvolysis to happen. This is not a great nucleophile. If you think about it, this is only just one thing away from being water, right? So this is not the best nucleophile we could go and reach for. And we don't see SN1 occurring. So in a way, we need to make this more nucleophilic. We need to kind of do something to make it, uh, to improve methanol to being 100%, you're gonna do nucleophilic attack. So what you can do and what I'd recommend is since we know this is SN2, we need to improve this nucleophile. The first step I would do is throw in a strong base. It doesn't matter what it is really. It can be a big one, it can be a small one, but let's just use a big one for fun. You can either go with uh, the potassium terbutoxide or we can use LDA because we've talked about LDA before. I would use either one of these just to be safe because all they will do with methanol is just rip this H off giving us effectively, if I just, you know, track our changes down here, CH3O minus. So we get an alkoxide, right? Now, we are a charged species. This is, thing is definitely a better nucleophile than it was before. This will not wait around for SN1 to happen. This is 100% going to do SN2. So the first step is deprotonate your nucleophile. Okay, 
So we weren't given whatever this, you know, thing is on the end. So what, when, whenever that's the case, you are supposed to provide that. So what we need to look at is we need to provide the rest of the structure minus the OCH3. And it has to have the correct stereochemistry. So if we think about it, we can make this easy on ourselves. Let's assign, uh, actually, let's go from here. Actually, let's, let's assign stereochemistry. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to explain this one way. Let's do, it the, let's do it this way. Let's assign stereochemistry here. Our lowest priority group is this hydrogen. Unfortunately, it's not facing away from us or towards us, right? So this is a scenario, if we throw it back to the stereochem unit, we're going to have to do a double switch. This is like a good, good bit of review. That's what I didn't really want to go back to. But when in Rome, we'll go for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the H and the D. Hydrogen's down here. Deuterium's over there. Wedged OCH3 over here. You guys do not have a whiteboard. I fortunately do. I'm just going to go ahead and switch these two right here. So the deuterium is right here. OCH3 is now over here. Okay, cool. So now we have our initial configuration regained because we did a double switch and our lowest priority group is now facing away from us. So let's go ahead and sign RNS for our product. Highest priority, second highest priority, third highest priority. These markers are not doing great. All right, so lowest priority group is facing away from us. For turning a car, we're going to the right. This stereo center is R. The reason why we went through all that trouble is because remember, SN2 inverted our stereo chemistry. So if we are R in the product, we need to be S in the uh, substrate. So I still look like this. Uh, we now, this is, the, this is the carbon question. We need to make him S. And at the same time, we also need to provide some good leaving groups. So pick a halogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, Let's just even give it a go. Actually, what we can do is, if we know this is R, what we can do is I can just replace this with our leaving group. I'll pick iodine, something that will definitely be the first priority, and I'll just switch these two. So I'll put hydrogen down here and deuterium over here, because that's just a single switch, right? So if I go to assign R and S again, first priority, second priority, third priority, well, wouldn't you know, looks like S and it actually is S. So let me rehash that because I, I made a, had a little bump in the road. Sorry about that. So the way we tackled this, we realized it was a substance. It was an SN2 reaction because there was no elimination. There was no double bond and there was no uh, racemic mixture given to us. So it was not an SN1 reaction. It had to be SN2. We also knew it was a primary carbon. So that's also good, good for SN2 as well. We knew that this is polar protic, not a great nucleophile, to prevent the possibility of SN1 and to also improve methanol as a nucleophile, we just deprotonated it. That was good. Then we had to provide the actual substrate. So what we did, we looked at the product, we looked at what the, stereo, the stereochemical outcome was, we found it to be R, we knew our substrate had to be S. So all we did was we replaced our nucleophile with a good leaving group and we just changed a set of groups did a single switch, which gave us the opposite stereochemistry. Okay, guys, I have one more problem in this video. Stick with me, we're almost done. Okay, gang, last reaction in this video, and then we can close the book on substitution and elimination for a little while. Okay, anyways, let's look at what we got here. So, let's go through our checklist. Substrate, it is a tertiary substrate leaving group. Oh, look, we see that toss lake group again. I'm just gonna Another opportunity to give you guys uh, exposure to that. So this is a good leaving group, right? OH, not a good leaving group, but OTS, excellent leaving group. Okay, solvent, we look at over the arrow, looks like we just have water, which is gonna double up as the nucleophile or the base, as well as a polar protic solvent. So tertiary, polar protic, good leaving group. This looks to be either SN1 or E1. And I hope, based on the last video, that you're looking at this high temperature, this question is designed to favor elimination, right? Because remember, temperature, when we looked at the Gibbs free, uh, Gibbs free energy equation, favors, it increases that entropic effect, it favors elimination. So 
in my world, this question is designed to favor E1. So what I would do is I would show the solvolysis step. I always try to draw my initial carbocation right there. And here I'd like to then decide where's the double bond going to go. And in E1, right, we're always trying to form the most stable double bond, the most substituted double bond. And you might be thinking, oh, it's going to be this way. But not so fast, right? Water's our base, so let's bring him into the picture. Now think about this, right? We need a hydrogen to eliminate. This right here, that is a quaternary carbon. There's no hydrogen there for us to eliminate. So we need to then reset. This, is, this bond is not going to happen. So then we look for the next best option. And you know what? Tertiary, secondary is the best one we can look at and find. Grab the H, form the double bond after you eliminate the hydrogen, and your product looks like this. Okay, gang, I know this was a longer video. I really tried to make these questions the most involved you might see, right? There, uh, I hope you've gained the process of narrowing down what type of reaction you're looking at as far as these four options. And then remembering the little intricacies about each mechanism, right? Whether it's stereochemical inversion, uh, anti-periplanar, hoffman seitzeff elimination, um, remembering that uh, you can have racemic mixtures with SN1, and then E1, you know, the temperature factor as far as forming the most stable double bond. You did great. I'm sure you guys are killing it. Make sure you hit the worksheets and hit them hard. I know I have one where you have to decide between all four, and uh, then we'll just keep chugging along through Ochem 1.